What's up everybody, it's Joe here and in today's video we are going to learn how to use some very important property wrappers for SwiftUI apps. We are talking about state, binding, state object, observed object, environment object, observable object protocol and publish it. So let's jump right in. First of all, let's have a quick overview of how it works. Apple has an article about state and data flow in SwiftUI apps that I will leave the link in the description. The idea is to understand how SwiftUI handles state and flow inside their applications. SwiftUI handles the view. The view will always respond to the state it has, and the state will always be changed by an action. An action can be made by a user when it interacts with the application, or by an external event that will publish changes. And of course, those changes will change the state and the view will respond to its state. The view will always render the screen for the user. Now, let's have an idea of how property wrappers can help us deal with those states. Let's begin with state and binding. The idea is that they are going to store and observe values. For example, if I have a view that has a state property wrapper in a variable, it means that this variable is going to be the owner of the value and of course the view will respond to this state. A binding variable is a little bit different. The difference is that it doesn't have a value associated. It is only referring to a state variable. Of course, it will reflect the same value as it is in the state variable. And if we change something on the binding variable or the state variable, it will reflect to each other. Now, let's see a quick example. Let's create a new Xcode project. Select iOS app and click Next. I will name this project Tutorial. Interface, select SwiftUI. Language, Swift and click Next. I will create the project on my desktop folder. Now let's create a new file. It will be a Swift Y view. Let's resume the preview. And I'm going to change the preview layout to size that fits. Now I will create a V stack inside my view. This V stack is going to have two texts. The first one is going to be counter with the font large title and the second text will have the string total is x now i will create a variable with the state proper wrapper it's going to be called counter with the value zero i will update the preview and insert this counter inside my string. So, total is zero. Now, I will create a button to change the counter variable. It's going to increase counter with plus one. The name of the button is going to be increase to counter plus one. Now, if we run the preview, we're going to see that when we click the button, it will increase the counter and change the text. So, the view will respond to the state it has. Now, let's suppose that I want to create a new view just for the button. I'm going to name it Tutorial Footer View and create a body for it. Inside this view, I'm going to insert my button. This view is going to have a variable with the binding property wrapper and only the type. So I don't need to insert a value on this variable. This binding property wrapper in this variable is going to make it refer to the state variable that is in my tutorial view. So, I will instantiate the tutorial footer view inside my tutorial view. 
and Xcode will fix it for us to pass only the binding to the footer view. If we run the preview, we are going to see that we have the same behavior as before with two different views. Now let's understand how to use state object and observed object. The idea is similar to a state and binding, but the difference is that those property wrappers are made for custom types. Let's suppose that I have a view with a state object property wrapper associated in a variable. It means that this variable is going to have a custom type that I created. In this case, it's something. Now, if I have a view with your observed object proper wrapper associated in a variable, it doesn't need to have an instance associated, only the type, because it will be referring to the state object. For it to work, it's required that our custom type conforms to the observable object protocol. This custom class can have a published proper wrapper associated with its variables so it will automatically trigger any reference to this object for updates the state when this variable is changed. Now let's update our code to use the observable object protocol. I will create a custom type called something and conform to the observable object protocol and inside of it I will create a variable with the published proper wrapper now I will change the proper wrapper to state object and instantiate my something variable. Inside my text I will add the thing dot counter to access my internal counter of the something instance. I will change the proper wrapper of the footer view to observed object and the name I will change it to think. Of course, the type is going to be something. I will update the reference to the counter inside the thing variable. Xcode will fail the build because it's needed to change the init of the footer view. I will pass the thing. And if we run the preview, we are going to see that we have the same behavior as before with a custom type that we created. Last but not least, we have environment object that allows us to pass custom instances to the view hierarchy. It means that any subview at any level can refer to the environment object. For example, I can pass my state object to the view hierarchy using the method environment object and inserting my custom class. Now, at any subview and any level, I can access this object with the proper wrapper environment object. And as we saw before, our custom instance needs to conform to the observable object protocol. This custom class, as we saw before, can have a published proper wrapper associated in its variables to automatically trigger any reference to this custom class. Now, let's have an idea of how it works. I will create a new file. It will be a Swift Y view. I will name this Tutorial Views. And inside this file, I'm going to change the name of my view to Blue View. I will change the layout to size that fits. I will add a Z stack with color blue, ignoring the safe area. Now I will create another view. It will be the red view. And add a padding here. Now I will add the red view inside the blue view and update the preview. Now I will create another view. It's going to be the yellow view. Now I will insert the yellow view inside the red view and update the preview. For this example, 
I will create a new class called my custom data and it will conform to the observable object protocol. I will create a new variable with the published property wrapper called text and I will add the hello world text. Now inside my blue view I will create a variable with the property wrapper state object. It will be called data and it will have my custom data instance. Now inside my blue view I will add an environment object inside the red view and inside the yellow view I will add a new variable with the proper wrapper environment object and it's going to be called data referring to my custom data. I will add a text component here with the text that is inside data. As we can see, we have the text in the yellow view and the red view doesn't even know that there is an environment object. So, as we can see, the environment object is inside the view's hierarchy. So, if I needed to, I can access this environment object inside the red view or any other subview at any level. That's it for today's video. If you have any comments, please let me know. And if I helped you, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon.